uh, from the state of Florida, the National Guard, uh, and obviously the Department of Defense. Uh, Hurricane Dorian has been upgraded uh, to a Category 5 storm with now 185 mile per hour uh, sustained winds. And to put that in perspective, that's significantly stronger than Hurricane Andrew, which reached landfall at 165 miles per hour. It's significantly stronger than Hurricane Michael, uh, which reached landfall at 160 mile per hour. Uh, Florida has had one hurricane uh, in our history, uh, the Labor Day hurricane of 1935, uh, that reached at that level, and that was total, total destruction. So the strength of this storm cannot be underestimated. Um, we will see strop tropical form stores, uh, force winds within the next 48 hours. Uh, the National Hurricane Center reports Dorian could nearly stall over the Bahamas for more than 24 hours starting late tonight. Um, and as many of you who have been following this forecast know, uh, pretty much all computer models and all forecasters uh, anticipate this turning north. Uh, we just don't know when exactly it's going to turn north. Um, it could turn north. Obviously, we want to have that turn as quickly as possible uh, to minimize the impacts on Florida. Uh, but if you look at the forecast, um, it absolutely could impact the coast and turn once it hits the coast. Uh, and so we've got to prepare for that eventuality. Uh, a hurricane watch has been issued for the east coast of Florida from north of Deerfield Beach to the Volusia Brevard County line. A storm, storm surge watch has also been issued for those same areas. A tropical storm warning is in effect for north of Deerfield to Sebastian Inlet. Um, bottom line is you're going to see these watches and warnings increase on the east coast of Florida. I think a lot of the counties are executing their evacuation plans. We think that that's prudent and we support that. Palm Beach has eva mandatory evacuations today uh, starting at 1 p.m. zones A and B. Martin uh, evacuations, 1 o'clock, zones A and B. Uh, St. Lucie is going to be starting them at 2 o'clock uh, for everything east of US-1. Uh, Brevard has evacuations ongoing right now. Uh, Indian River, Volusia, St. John's um, are all implementing uh, evacuation plans, and we expect Flagler, Duval, Nassau counties will be announcing uh, their plans uh, very shortly. It's important for people to, to understand if you're in an evacuation zone and you're given an order to evacuate, uh, please heed that call. Uh, this storm at this magnitude uh, could really cause massive destruction and do not put your life in jeopardy uh, by staying behind uh, when you have a chance to get out. Um, and you still do have time uh, to prepare yourself um, and to make sure that you and your family uh, are safe. Uh, in terms of the, the evacuation routes, uh, I've directed uh, our Secretary Tebow to suspend tolls on the Florida Turnpike, Alligator Alley, Sawgrass Expressway, and the 528 Beach Line in Central Florida. Uh, and then after doing that, I received a request from Orange County Mayor Jerry Demings to suspend tolls for the East-West Beltway around Orlando, State Roads 417 and 429. I have granted that request. Uh, we are monitoring traffic, and uh, the shoulders are ready to be open uh, if need be. Uh, right now, the traffic is relatively stable, um, and so use the normal lanes. If we end up having backup, then those shoulders will be open. But of course, you know, the shoulders bring with it some, some safety concerns as well. Uh, we're continuing to monitor the fuel situation. Uh, they're not uh, currently fuel shortages, um, and I think you've seen a, a decline in demand for fuel in Miami-Dade based on the, the change of this cone. We don't have any bridge closures planned at this time. The Coast Guard makes decisions um, on that based on the wind speed. Um, so the bridges will remain open for marine and vehicle traffic as long as they can safely uh, be open. Um, and obviously that situation is going to continue to be monitored. Uh, Fort Lauderdale, Hollywood International, Palm Beach International, Orlando International, airports are all currently open. They are monitoring the hurricanes and are going to keep their customers informed. Uh, Orlando Melbourne International will close on Monday evening. Um, in terms of generators, um, ACA Secretary Mayhew has confirmed that every nursing home and assisted living facility in a coastal county along Florida's east coast from Palm Beach all the way to Nassau either has a generator on site 
or has plans to evacuate uh, their residents. And so these duties have a duty to ensure the safety of their residents and, and they'll be held accountable um, if they do not. Um, so we are in a situation here where this thing is perilously close to the state. Um, I think we should all hope and pray for the best, uh, but we have to prepare that this could have major impacts on the state of Florida. And so that's what we're doing. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously we want to be ready to respond um, as soon as the storm does pass. So you still have time to, to prepare. You still have time to heed these, these evacuation orders. Um, and please take this storm seriously. It's been a very, you know, somewhat frustrating experience, not knowing kind of a lot of uncertainty with this thing. But, um, you know, I think back to to some of the major hurricanes in Florida in the beginning part of the 20th century. They didn't have any warning about anything. You just all of a sudden see, um, you know, clouds gather and you have a major hurricane. So, um, you know, we have a sense of, of, of what parts of Florida are threatened and we want people to, to protect themselves and their families. Have a time to take a couple questions. Governor, 24 hours, we heard the director talk about making targeted decisions based upon scenarios being taken off the table. Are more resources moving to the East Coast now in, in light of that? It'll be more targeted. We're also going to be um, likely doing um, uh, uh, probably more National Guard mobilization than we anticipated just for those counties, just because the storm is getting um, so, so significant in terms of its ferocity that um, you know, we've got a plan for potential search and rescue um, along the East Coast. If, if it comes to that, uh, we anticipate um, you know, if we were to get impacted directly, um, I think you're going to have a lot of flooding uh, up and down the entire East Coast of Florida. Um, so there's going to be assets needed. So those are, uh, the, the, those are being done. Uh, be, those mobilizations are occurring right now. Governor, are you concerned that a number of the newspapers today had headlines breathing a sigh of relief and you now have to overcome that? I'm concerned just simply because, you know, when you're in that cone, if you're in that cone, you have the opportunity uh, and there's a, there's a good or possibility that you could be impacted. Now, obviously, you do these things on percentages. You look at the trends. I think we did see a positive trend east, but then it tacked a little bit further west. So if you look at the National Hurricane Center's current track, I mean, I think it ends up within 30 miles of the coast of Florida. Well, guess what? You do just a touch of a, of a bump one way or another, and you have a dramatic difference all of a sudden with the possibilities on the cone. And so um, I think what we've tried to do is, uh, you know, earlier in the week, I mean, we were very, you know, factual about what we were putting out. We told people to take prepa be prepared. Um, and then now, although we really hope for the best, you know, we've been pretty consistent that, um, that the threat is still there. And so people should just understand that. And I think people did think this storm was going to get their strength there's no doubt about it but I think the consensus was that this maybe it'll reach a cat four uh, well this is a cat five plus right now and uh, you would really have to go back to 1935 in the state of Florida when the Labor Day hurricane came through and just obliterated the keys uh, to find um, anything that that had reached this level of, uh, 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 of danger yes obviously you know that um that there's a significant number of uh, resources down at, at Mar-a-Lago, down in Palm Beach County. Um, do you know if that area has also been evacuated or if anything particularly has been set up, just given all the money that we've already put into it? I don't know anything specifically about, about Mar-a-Lago. Um, I do know, I mean, obviously Palm Beach County's evacuation zones are more of the east of the turnpike type things. And so you would get a lot of the Palm, you know, Palm Beach Island and, and some of those other areas. I would say when you're talking about Palm Beach and Martin County, you know, there's a lot of those coastal residents who aren't in Florida year round. And I think there'd probably be a heavier population if this was in October rather than at the end of August, beginning of September. Um, nevertheless, there is going to be uh, folks there who are going to who are going to need to evacuate. Um, and then there have been um, I know government resources have been moved around just more generally. I've spoken with the um, uh, commanding officer for Navy Region Southeast about what they're doing to safeguard their ships. Some of those are going to remain in port and they're all kind of on lockdown. Um, that is uh, kind of typical with their procedures, although I don't know if they've ever gone through uh, a storm of this magnitude were that to be directly impact impacted. So, so there are assets being moved around. The Coast Guard was on the, um, on the call with the President. And, um, you know, they made it very clear that they're going to be uh, able to respond, you know, immediately after this 
storm passes. And so that is obviously something uh, that, that's very, very important to us. We, because uh, since we don't know the exact path, I mean, the, the amount of destruction could, could, could vary, uh, but I definitely would anticipate, I mean, if we get, if we get hit with this, you know, you're going to have a, a demand for search and rescue. I mean, that's just, uh, that's just going to happen. Regarding the bridge closure, especially in the very rare um, islands, um, I know you said there's no decisions yet on it and the Coast Guard will make that, but how long can people on those islands expect to have, if they're under evacuation orders, to leave? Because once they're closed, they can't get out. No, for sure. So, I mean, what, uh, the National Hurricane Center puts out a lot of a lot of guidance. I would look at that. It varies based on where you are on the East Coast. Um, but once you start to get into those tropical uh, storm force winds, uh, you end up in a situation where, where those bridges, um, you know, may not be uh, uh, be operable going forward. And so, so people just need to look at that, figure out where they are, uh, look at the guidance that, that the NHC is putting out, and then make those decisions. Now, um, all these counties, you know, are going to have shelters, uh, and so those uh, types of evacuations um, are, are one thing. If people are planning on evacuating in their cars and just getting out of Dodge, then, then obviously you've got to build in the time uh, to be able to do that. Um, I did the tolls not only on the Turnpike and some of the places going north, but obviously going west, because I think if you're in Palm Beach and some of these counties, you know, you may find that route to make more sense uh, going to the west coast. And given how the cone has moved, that probably, you know, would be, would be, a, would be a sound decision. So, uh, so people just need to, to need to do that and heed and heed the calls, uh, but make sure that they're prepared. If you're in a place like Duval County or Nassau, you know, obviously there's going to be some type of guidance issued, but you should just be prepared that if you've had to evacuate in the past, you may be called upon to do it again. And so make those preparations now so that you can do that as smooth as possible. One more. Are you guys looking at any other major highways or roads that you guys are considering suspending holes on? Um, we basically suspended uh, all of them that would um, be evacuation routes from these affected counties. Um, now, Mayor Demings asked us about the Orlando. That's fine. So if there's other maybe smaller toll roads that people uh, have a request for, we'll obviously look at that. But we've got Western, Northern, Turnpike, and 75 uh, that, that we've suspended. And um, obviously, as long as there's evacuation orders, you know, that's going to be something that we're going to continue um, to do. So we're going to be monitoring this thing. and. Um, People should, should remain vigilant, and, and, and let's hope for the best, but, but let's just be prepared and take the steps necessary so we can protect everyone. Thank you.